So, can you just smart smart repair anywhere on a car? Or um, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd stick to smaller areas. Bumpers are fine, but if you come to things like middle of doors, bonnets, I wouldn't recommend it because the environment the smart repair are working. Panels like bonnets, roofs, doors. I'd recommend going to a body shop. Oh, I see. So it's not a miracle cure for all damage then. No, no, no. So. But, presumably this is convenience and if you have just a scuff, which most cars have, do they? Yeah, scuffs are fine, even little even strips on the doors are fine. But if, you, if, it, if it's part of the door, then I recommend the body shop. Right, okay, so I, see, I think I see what you mean. Right, so there's the damage on the corner there, which is only about the size of um, well, a big grapefruit. Okay, so what bit do you intend to paint there, Matt? I'm going to paint it out to about here, fade it out to here, Yeah. because I want to follow this line, Yeah. and because the line fades out here, I'm going to try and lose the lacquer to there, around this side, bring it down to this narrow <coughs> spot, and lose the lacquer about here. Okay. So, what about the atmosphere then, um, dust and such, how does that affect it? Because, because of the areas uh, smart repair techniques use, the size of the areas we paint, um, whether we're indoors or outdoors, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Plus, most of the panels we paint are quite uh, sort of straight down panels. You don't really get a lot of dirt and grit landing in the paint. But... Just out of interest, then, why are you actually rubbing it down before you've masked it up? It's um, you could blow all the dust off if you mask it up before. You get all, you could get all the dust trapped in there, could stick into the tape. Oh, I see. So what is that you're doing there then? Covering up the parking sensor. Just don't want to get any paint on it. Good. Start painting the sensors. The sensitivity will be decreased when you're using them. Oh, I see. How we mix the colours is that we take the paint cord off the vehicle. We have a program on the laptop. Uh, which you type in the code and you will come up with the formulation which gives you the measurements all the different colours and the measurements that go into the colour I see, so how does that compare with a body shop on the colour side? The colour side of it, the, the, it to mix up the colour is exactly the same as the body shop we just mix it in very slow, um, very slow small, um, smaller small dosages so that's you mixing a paint now for this BMW that's correct, yeah. Okay, so what about the lacquers then? How do they compare? So the, f the, the, the colours are exactly the same, just a smaller scale, but the, the lacquers are...? The lacquers are very similar, but the stuff we use is more environmentally friendly because of the environments we work in. Um, we use a non-isocyanide two-pack lacquer where a body shop would use possibly an isocyanide-based lacquer. So the finished end result from a from a point of view is the same is it exactly the same the quality of stuff we use is the same as the body shop exactly right. the same okay but the the lacquers we use because of the non isocyanide they they are more expensive than the body shop okay so that's the bit i was wondering basically it's all we get a line across here when it's blue it sort of means you can pour quite a bit you've got a fair bit to go I'll show you the next one. Oh, I see. That's giving you an indicator of when it's nearly... Yeah. Otherwise, you you could end up putting too much in, but, like, yeah. filling your car up, you want to put £20 <laughs> in or something, or yeah. and then you've got £20 in your pocket, and you've got to slow down near the end. Exactly. You don't want to go over, isn't it? <laughs> so the paint's the same thing. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. If you do go over, like, quite a bit, you can recalculate the whole mix. That would, ah. that, would, that would mean mixing up quite a bit more sometimes. But that's, he has got a way of doing that. Yeah, you can get out of it. Oh, that's clever. So, yeah, so now I've got a, a blue line down there. This is quite a tricky one. Some of these colours are more tricky than others. It takes a bit of mixing to get it right, doesn't it? To get the colour exactly right. Yeah, you have to be quite thorough with it. I mean, look how it's all stuck around the side at the moment. Yeah. Just give it a good straight round. Ah, uh, right. So you get all that off, so you've got to make sure you mix up the right, you get the right shade, basically. Very clever. And 
there's some flashy guns up there. One of those is yours, isn't it? The one at the back? Oh yeah, that's one of mine, yeah. It's a flashy looking gun, yeah. <laughs> like having your own bowling ball. <laughs> yeah. And there's Dave's, the orange one. Who's is the one with the flames? Oh, yeah, but they're all Dave's. Oh, are they? Yeah. Bit of a fanatic, is he? Yeah, he loves it. I think he's going to get another one soon. Does he? Treat himself to a new gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boys and their toys, eh? <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you just repair just that area? Why don't you paint this door and then stop just past here and repair that area? Well, you know, in other words, just paint the silver just past there. Why wouldn't you do that? Generally, you have, with a lot of metallics and modern colours, you have to give yourself plenty enough room to blend the colour. Yeah. Because there's so many different things, reasons, temperature, application, that can make the colour look different. And if you're trying to keep it really, really close, Show me what you mean on that panel well, then. Which if you were to colour this, you would have to put your silver at least to here yeah. and, and fade, fade it in, and then you lacquer a bit further. So it's not much difference to just lacquer all the way to the end. So you would do all the way to the end on here, and you could come off this line. But if yeah. you come off this line, you've then got primer, colour, and lacquer all on one line. It's too much, so you can have a build-up. So you've got a bit of a step there, so you'd effectively you want to paint more of the door. So tell me roughly then, we'll have a look when it's being sprayed, but roughly what you're talking, when you're making an even finish down the side of a silver car then, where would you finish on the silver? On the silver you would... We're looking at the door right now, yeah? yeah? you would fade it in, so you would, obviously you've got to have colour here, and you need to blend because you've got the, the yellow there, so you would have probably 100% colour to about there, so yeah. about halfway around the door, you then reduce it down to about 80, 50%, then your final bit here would have between 5 and 10%. Right. So you'd have your old silver matches, your old silver on your wing, and it'll gradually fade okay. into your new silver down the side. So what would be the effect if I tried to just paint it to there? Just do a small area, like a smart repair? Well, you could, it might look okay, but the other thing is, is when you do that, the other area past it can sometimes you can make it look darker because the colour here is nice and wet and then this bit can be dry so you could end up having a patch so you put it to a petrol station one day under the lights and you'll see a patch here when someone's blown it in and it'll right. stand out more so it might look alright initially even, you could be lucky you could be lucky and then, but then after that, after a short period of time oh a short period of time, it'll show up but the thing is, there's no point getting rid of the dent and having that lovely and smooth and then having poor paintwork. So you get rid of your dent, but then you've got a paint that you can occasionally see. Right. You're going to do it, you do it properly. Right, okie okay, doke. So you can see on there where, where the silver has gone onto the basket. So you've got there, you've got say 100% silver. Yep. And as it comes along, it gradually fades to 75, down to sort of 50, 25, and you get down to here. See on the tape that there's no silver at all. Yeah. So basically, but only here I could see. It's gradually starting. To so this up. is how you fade it across this panel, and then this won't look patchy later. No. And then what you do is you put a clear lacquer yep. all the way along, so the clear lacquer seals it, so you won't see the 